Hello again guys and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. Myself Tade and my name is Theodor. Hello. Theodor. Uh, today we'll be discussing the term minimal and maximal exit pupil. Uh, Theodor, I would like to ask you first, what does this term basically mean, minimal and maximal exit pupil, and when does it occur? Well, we have this term in our tables of specification for all products which have a classical optical construction but which feature variable magnification. So exit pupil is the diameter of the, of the light coming out of the optical instrument. However, if the optical instrument has only one magnification fixed, setting uh, of magnification, then exit pupil diameter is always constant, is the same mm -hmm. all the time. And we are able to calculate this exit pupil diameter by dividing the lens diameter with the power of magnification. That means if we have a, let's say, a rifle scope or a binoculars with a, with a specification of 50 millimeter objective lens and 10 time magnification, mm -hmm. then we know that the exit pupil is five millimeters. However, minimal and maximal exit pupil occur when you have a variable magnification. However, the diameter of the lens always stays the same. So if you have 2 to 10 by 50 rifle scope, which has a magnification setting available in the range from power 2 all the way to power 10 and the constant objective lens of 50 millimeters, mm -hmm. then you know that the smallest, the smallest exit pupil is 5 millimeters while the biggest exit pupil is, well, uh, two millimeters. Uh -huh. So, uh, it, no, five and we said two to 50 and 25. Uh -huh. So it goes from five millimeters to 25 millimeters. Uh -huh. And this rifle scope which you have here now is a perfect example to show how this looks. I think that people will, it will be easier for them to see this. Of so course. we have a, a 0 0.75 to six uh, uh, Swarovski Z8 and we can see now it's set uh, it is set to 6 like this okay now we see that we see that the edge of the X pupil is completely sharp so this is the proper eye relief so now it's uh, the, the plane of this box is in, in focus with the, with the scope and now we see we have a 20 millimeter objective lens divided by 6 and here is the, the exit pupil diameter. Mm -hmm. If we change the magnification, as you can see, the exit pupil grows. And if, if we go all the way to one, we see that it's much bigger than it was before. Uh, it should be uh, 20 millimeters big because the objective yes. uh, lens is 20 millimeters. So power one, uh, 20 millimeters uh, divided by power one, it should be 20. But because the eye can only go to seven millimeters mm -hmm. of uh, of the diameter, it can dilate only to seven millimeters. The re this is the reason why in Swarovski and all premium scopes they limit the maximum exit pupil. So everything what goes above ten they limit because it has no use. Mm -hmm. uh, so we now see it's around ten millimeters of exit pupil the diameter. If you go back to the setting six we see it starts to contract like this. So okay. now it's, we should divide 20 by six. It's 3.6, something like that. So this is the diameter at the moment. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is a good representation of what the maximum and the minimal exit pupil means. In this, at six time magnification is the minimal diameter, a little bit less than four millimeters. Then at one power, it grows, 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 and now it's almost 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. If you go to 0 0.75, it grows to around 12. So this is this is the maximum exit pupil. While on the on the highest magnification, it is the minimum exit pupil. And these are basically uh, here. It's nicely shown what the minimal value means and what the maximum value means. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a rifle scope here. Can this also occur, or we can can we use this method to calculate and measure the exit pupil of both binoculars too? Or yeah, on rifle scopes. On those binoculars which have uh, variable magnification, mm -hmm. and also on spotting scopes, on on all 
classical mechanical optics which have uh, variable magnification. Mm -hmm. You can have the same representation on all of them. Uh, are there any um, deviations regarding how much uh, the human eye can, uh, the human pupil can enlarge regarding this matter? Yeah, it basically says that when a young, healthy individual, the eye can go all the way up to seven millimeters. Mm -hmm. So every exit pupil in, in optics, like we have seen here on, on power one on this rotoscope, we have around 10 millimeters of exit pupil it's already three millimeters too big mm -hmm. because your eye is not able to really use the, the entire light which mm -hmm. comes out. Uh, and when you, when you get older, I would say from 55 to 60 and onwards, then your eye is not uh, able to extract all the way mm -hmm. to seven meter, uh, millimeters anymore. Then it, it's even smaller. However, if you have the bigger eye, uh, exit pupil, this also means that you have a little bit better eye box because your eye can go anywhere inside of this circle and will still have the image. Mm -hmm. So basically with, with a maximal exit pupil uh, around 10 millimeters, it is a waste of light because the, the eye can only go up to seven millimeters. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, it's far more comfortable to use optics like this one because you have more uh, space where you can move with your eye and still have a clear image. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you only you mentioned just briefly uh, how to calculate the ex exit pupil. Can you mm -hmm. please uh, once more for our for our uh... yeah? It, it's it's really simple. Uh, it's the diameter of the objective lens divided by the power. Mm -hmm. uh, on this wide-angle rifle this is a little bit uh, complicated because usually the exit pupil is limited by the manufacturer because it wouldn't have any sense to have a twenty-four millimeters exit pupil. But on, on all other scopes, which uh, usually have uh, smaller diameters of exit pupils, it will work. If you have uh, a scope with a 56 millimeter objective lens and uh, let's say 3 to 12, 3 to 12 by 56, if you calculate the minimal and the maximum uh, exit pupil and then measure it, it should, it should work, it should be the mm -hmm. same because there is, uh, it's no use of, uh, of limiting the exit pupil if it's not bigger than, let's say, 12 or 15 millimeters. So this, as we can see, is a very, we can say primitive, but yeah, very easy way on how to calculate or measure the, the exit pupil of a certain optic instrument, optical instrument. I would say it's quite hard to measure it, but it's a, <laughs> it's a basic setting how to show what yeah, this it's, is. Yeah, it's a basic setting. Yeah, so a flashlight, yeah. a rifle scope, a, a white box, and you can clearly, anyone can clearly see how the exit pupil changes in its diameter when you change the magnification. Mm -hmm. So this is the main purpose of this test. Now, now we see it's really small, it has the minimal value because the, the magnification setting is on the highest. Then when we go on the lowest magnification setting, then we see this is the maximum mm -hmm. value because the, the exit pupil of, the, of this rifoscope goes, uh, grows substantially. Mm -hmm. So this is just, uh shown in practice how this basically works but this is really a very very primitive way what we showed mm -hmm. but in uh, in terms it, it goes like this i hope it's really clear to understand yes I hope and too. it's really clear that you understand when you look at the specification table on our web page to really understand what we meant with the minimal mm -hmm. exit pupil what we meant with the maximum exit that's correct pupil. Okay, I think we uh, cleared up this term. If you have, however, any additional questions, if you wish to add something, feel free to write us an email, uh, leave a comment below or subscribe to our channel. Take Thank care. You.